Hi everyone. Uh, today I wanted to go through a quick uh, processing tutorial. If you want to call it a tutorial, it's actually just kind of showing you how I process some images that I shot this last weekend at the International Gold Cup. I got a lot of uh, emails asking, you know, what what was the process I used, and everyone kind of thought it was an HDR thing, uh, but in reality it wasn't HDR. It was actually a plugin that I use to get the effect. Uh, of, for the image. So today I'm going to just do a quick run through and show you the exact process I used to make that effect. So here I am in Lightroom 2 and this is just part of my, my workflow. I, I work my images in Lightroom and then take them over to, to uh, Photoshop for any advanced treatment and that's what I'm going to do in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and control click on my image and click on edit in I'm going to choose CS3. Um, I'm going to go ahead and edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. I didn't really make any Lightroom adjustments yet, not too many. Um, but the nice thing about working from Lightroom uh, into Photoshop is that it creates that separate image. So you're never really touching the original. It actually gives you a copy to work on and then you can go and it takes that image back to Lightroom. So here we are with my image right here and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, let me move it over so you can see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command J, and what that does is it gives us a second layer to work on. I'm going to need this bottom layer in just a minute, so I don't want to perform all of the adjustments to that original background layer. All right, the second thing I'm going to do to this image is I'm going to apply a plugin to this called Lucis Art, and uh, Lucis Art is kind of a uh, little cult. Uh, program plugin that people have been using for a while. It really gives a, a really nice uh, effect. Um, they've got several different effects actually. Um, kind of painterly effects and one called sculpture and one's exposure. And The one I've actually had the most uh, success with is one called Wyeth. Um, and if I'm pronouncing it wrong, who cares because there it is. Uh, you can see which one it is. Uh, it, there's five radial buttons on here and those radial buttons control the strength of the effect um, that you're applying. So you can see from number five is just way over the top all the way down to a very minimal effect down here at number one. I'm going to go ahead and choose number two just for a little bit more effect. And then I'm going to take this slider right here and this slider actually lets you mix in how much of that effect you're getting um, and combines it with the the original image. So you can take that really strong if you go all the way up to the top and then just kind of dial it back down. I'm going to choose somewhere around 30 for my effect and what I'm looking for really is I want a little bit more detail. Actually, I want a lot more detail in uh, the muscle structure of the horse uh, as he's getting ready to jump over this uh, this this particular jump right here. And you can really see as you as you pull this up, you get a lot more definition in the muscle uh, in the 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 glistening of the fur or of the uh, the hair and everything else. So it really is a, a nice little tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and let that process through. Now, uh, really quickly while it's processing, I can tell you that if you're running this uh, on, a, on a Mac, you have to run Photoshop in Rosetta mode. It will not work in standard mode. Uh, if you're on a PC, you're fine, so it's not a, not a big deal. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to show you the before and after. Now, this is after and this is before, and you can see that it really does add a lot of punch to this image. It really just adds a lot of definition. The problem is it does it to the entire image, and that's not really something I want. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put a mask on here, and I'm just going to go down here to Add Layer Mask. And this is where that bottom background layer is going to come in handy, because the bottom background layer does not have all of that detail. So what I'm going to do is instead of painting out all of this area around them, uh, around the horses and bringing that back to the original. Uh, I just have a small area that I need to change. So I'm going to go ahead and invert this mask, which shows me the background. Black reveals, um, white conceals. That's the little rhyme that you can use. Uh, and then I'm just going to paint in the areas that I want that additional detail. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit on these horses here, right here. And then I'm going to get myself a white brush, which I already have. I'm going to hit B to make sure I've got the, the, uh, the brush. And now I'm just going to go ahead and maybe take that down a little bit and then just start painting in with this brush and painting that detail in that I wanted originally from using that plugin. And as you can see, as I paint over the horse, it really just starts to make all those fine details pop. You can see all those muscles straining. Um, I can go over and do part of the, the rider here. Let me get part of this and actually get more detail in the jacket. Uh, come up in here, do the same thing. A little bit smaller brush. There we go. 
And I'm going to come over and maybe I can do the same for this horse back here because he wants to be detailed also. There we go. Get this foreleg over here and a little bit smaller brush and get this foreleg right here. All right, the other thing I can do if I wanted, say, to uh, add that detail to uh, all this uh, bush jump right here, all this uh, right here, um, get myself a bigger brush and then just paint that detail right back in. Okay, there we go. Uh, so as you can see, let me show you right here real quick. This is all I've let through from that mask. I'm going to just alt click on that mask and show you that those white areas are the only areas from that detail that I've actually let come through and, and be displayed onto the background image. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and close this image. And now up here you get the little dialog box that says, hey, do you want to save this? You don't want to save? Since I took this in from Lightroom, I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And the great thing is, it's going to pop me right back into Lightroom and take me right to that image. And then I can see a nice before and after. I'm going to click on Lightroom. Whoa. And all right, so here's the before and here's the after. Now, obviously, this image would not be done. And this is the other reason why I like to use Lightroom is I can go over to the Develop module now and I can start using the tools in the Develop module to really start to fine tune this. I can take my blacks up. I've got a little bit of room in the blacks that I can mess with here. Um, so I can raise those up um, and really start to, to make this image come alive. But to really get that detail, you can't do that any other way except maybe a little HDR or working with that Lucis Art. And so there you go. Let me just go back to the library now. And you can see that we came from this to this, which is just a lot more punch, a lot more pop to that image. And it really makes it stand out. And you can just feel that horse coming over the jump. So there you go. If uh, you have any questions about using the Lucis Art plugin or anything else in my process, go ahead and drop me an email. You can reach me at jeff at photowalkpro.com. Have a great day.